we are all made creative and we can either use our creativity to make excuses or to make something happen, make it happen. Hi everyone. My name is Chris Creary and I am the host of I Made a Podcast and the Faith Fight Podcast. You can find both of those podcasts on any one of the podcasts and apps, or you can go on any one of the social media apps and just search I Made a Podcast or the Faith Fight Podcast and be able to follow me. And you are watching and listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We're joined today by a very talented individual. I was on his show, feels like forever ago, but it was probably maybe six months or whatever it was. Talented podcaster, great, amazing host, asks some amazing questions. We're going to dive into his process, his creativity of his amazing show, because he doesn't have just one show called I Made a Podcast, famous phrase, but he also has the faith fight as well. We're joined by the ever talented Chris Creary. How are you doing today? Wonderful, Kurt. How are you doing? Doing good. It has been far too long. I and I say that to everyone, but your show gave me kind of a creative push when it came to being a guest on someone else's show, because I don't do that very often. As you know, mm -hmm. we, we are hosts of our own various shows, but you're a very talented individual. You asked some great questions. It got me thinking about my own show and how to rearrange myself because we get stagnant after so much time. Yeah. I'm rambling as I do. I apologize. But for those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what we're bringing to Two Geeks Talking today. Yeah, well, Kurt, I'm so glad that we got a chance to connect. I know we meant to do this, I think, a couple months ago, but my schedule got in the way and, and we didn't get to connect. So I'm so glad. I'm grateful that you took time um, out of your day and to have me on your platform. So thank you very much. Uh, like you mentioned, I'm a podcaster, podcast producer, editor. Um, I love podcasting. I've been doing it for... Ooh, I would have to say maybe about five and a half years I've been podcasting. I ha my first podcast started 2019. Uh, that was the Faith Fight podcast. And I've been doing that. It's a solo podcast to encourage other Christian believers to pursue the things of God and to grow spiritually and accomplish the things that, you know, God put them on this earth to do. But then this year in January is when I started, I made a podcast which is about podcasts. And that's how I connected with you. And I mean, like, I thought I knew, you know, being in podcasting up to that point in f for four years, I thought I knew so much about podcasting. It wasn't until after I started this show, I made a podcast that things kind of just like took off and I started to learn so much more about podcasting. And I just enjoy connecting with other podcasters, you know, helping them to get better at podcasting and sharing the knowledge that I'm learning about podcasting. I just love everything about it. Um, and it just encourages me so much as I get in these conversations with other podcasters because I'm passionate about it. So like this is just so great that I started this podcast. It just fills my heart when I can sit and talk to someone about podcasting. So that's basically what I do with, with my podcast. I mean, uh, I mean, I live in Toronto uh, or just outside of Toronto. Um, I have a seven-year-old. Um, and married uh, my wife. We were celebrating 10 years this year. Um, so we, yeah, that's basically me in a nutshell. I uh, do a lot of things. I think I mentioned just a moment ago that I'm a producer as well. So I, as, as well as having my two shows, I also have three other podcasts that I produce for other people, wow. as well as I help people launch their podcast. I recently just helped someone launch their podcast this past week, which was, nice. which was really encouraging. So that's pretty much me in a nutshell. And I have a daytime job, but you know, <laughs> It is what it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to support our hobby somehow, right? And if you're turning this from a hobby into a business. That's the main thing. And I think yeah. that's, that is something critically important that I think a lot of people need to understand that podcasting is no longer a hobby. It's no longer for the amateurs. It's for people that want to be successful in some way, shape or form and to reach a broader audience. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And the thing about podcasting is what I found out when I started is like with the internet, your reach can go so far. I, you know, don't tend to look at my downloads and the analytics too much, but when I, it's just amazing when I look and I see that, you know, people in places that I've never, countries that I've never heard of, you know, have listened to my podcast or downloaded it there. It just, you know, kind of blows my mind. And it's so amazing the reach that you can have with podcasting. Yeah. 
<laughs> Speaking of analytics, yeah, I, I don't pay too, too much attention, but when you see a massive spike, when you see someone like from Germany download your, your show or whatever, like not just one or two episodes, but like hundreds or a couple of hundreds. And it's just like, wow, that's just incredible. Yeah. The amazing reach of, of the internet and podcasts. And, and actually just recently, uh, and I've been trying to connect with podcasters from all over the world. For the most part, most of the people that I've spoken to on I Made a Podcast have been kind of in North America. Mm -hmm. uh, but recently, I was finally able to connect with someone from uh, South Korea. Oh, wow. uh, and I had her on the podcast. A little bit of a challenge with the time zones yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, but we were able to work it out. And then through the power of the internet and, you know, all of these online tools like Zoom, we were able to connect. She's in South Korea. I'm here in Toronto. And we had this amazing conversation about her podcast. And after that, after that conversation I had with her, I was just like, man, technology is something else. You know, think about it, like 20 years ago, what what would podcasting has have been, you know, if you were not able to have these type of tools that we had? that we have now, right? There will probably be like a huge delay if you're doing some sort of like long distance communication with someone. I mean, it's just amazing that we can have a real time conversation with someone on the other side of the world, right? And the conversation, it, it just flows so effortlessly and there's no delay and you know, you can have everything recorded and then have a conversation. It's just so amazing yeah. to me. I just love it. <laughs> you know, It's wonderful. <laughs> I can give you at least a perspective from 15 years ago. The audio quality was definitely not as good as it was today. The video quality absolutely sure was not <laughs> as good to, as today. Back then we were dealing with 360 to maybe 480 pixels for video quality. Mm -hmm. Like it was not to the standard of the 1080s and the 4Ks and 8Ks yeah. that we have here today. So yeah, the audio quality was extremely horrible for, for interviewing, especially if you had, say, like a live call-in show or something like that. It was just not to the same standard as it has today. So it's been a great push technology-wise here. But what is the most misunderstood aspect about being a podcaster that people who don't follow podcasting but listen to them misunderstand? Well, one of the things that I would say is when people listen to podcasts, it's really easy to just go on to Spotify or Apple Podcasts and find a new podcast to listen to. And there are so many there that you can listen to. And it's so easy just to go there, listen to a podcast, and you see people with hundreds of episodes. But one of the things that people don't realize is it actually takes some effort, some time to actually do that, right? One of the questions I ask on I Made a Podcast is, what is your biggest challenge with regards to podcasting? And I want to say maybe about 90% of the responses have to do with the time it takes to produce an episode, the time it takes to edit it, uh, put it together and, and everything like that. And I think that's one of the things that people don't really understand how much time it actually takes to actually create a podcast episode. If you don't know how to do it right. I have been podcasting since 2019. And one of the things that I continually do is find ways to become efficient in what I'm doing. I want to see how I can do everything that I need to do in the least amount of time for myself. This is how I'm able to kind of do like everything that I do when it comes to my full-time job, my podcast and producing podcasts for other people, being with my family. I don't think I've missed one of my son's soccer practices at all. <laughs> right. So like I try my best to be efficient as possible. If there's something that I can do with regards to my podcast that is repeatable, that I don't need to recreate every single time I do it because it will cut down the time. So for example, Example, like an intro or an outro that stays the same every single time I do an episode, I don't need to re-record that again. I just reuse the same one or a couple of variations of it, just spice it up a little bit and just change it up just to bring some variation of it. But I have a lot of templates for all of my clients. I have a template on my computer for them. So when they send me their audio to produce a, you know, their podcast episode for them, they send me their audio. I plug it into the template, maybe changing a few things here and there, trying to find ways to be efficient while I'm working my day job. You know, if I'm doing something that doesn't require a lot of brain cells, I can listen to the podcast for that client, plug it into the template while I'm doing my day job, work on my day job and listen to the podcast that I'm editing and just kind of make notes on the side. And then once I'm finished my day job, I would just go back to the file that I'm doing for that client. You know, if I need to cut this here or there, tweak this, whatever, and then it's done. 
right? So I found ways to be efficient and maximize the time that I have in a day. But I think that's one of the biggest things that people don't really realize how much time it takes to have a podcast, to produce a podcast. As easy as it is to listen to a podcast, it actually takes much more work to create a podcast and then to create a good podcast as well. It takes some effort. I have found ways to be efficient so that I can do all the things that I need to do. I hope that answers your question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think anything you give me during our interview will answer my question, no problem. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> We're always trying to learn something new, trying to do something different. And now that you're getting into the side of video, for me, it took me two years to get into video. Well, I was kind of thrown into video. But if it wasn't for me going to comic conventions and doing video interviews, I wouldn't have gotten into video. I would, probably would have stuck to being just a podcast. I'm glad to see that you're jumping into the video side of things. I think it's a necessary evil as much as a lot of the podcasting pros out there that are actual true like high level professionals say oh you don't need a video podcast i think you do i really think you need that extra bite of reach because the markets can be so inundated with so many different niches so many different topics and so many different genres we have to separate ourselves somehow yeah, absolutely. My first podcast, the Faith Fight podcast, all audio. And even to this very day, it's all audio. But I made a podcast. I realized that, yeah, I need to have some sort of video. And I mean, we could fight against it. You know, podcasters, we could say, hey, I'm never going to do video and say, I'm, you know, get away from me video. But, you know, if, what they say is uh, if you can't beat them, join them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube isn't going anywhere. Instagram isn't going anywhere. So you might as well figure out how to use it to your benefit. I realized that I have found a lot of podcasts through YouTube and through Instagram reels. Those apps, they're really pushing shorts and reels on both of those platforms. So if those companies are going to push those forms of content, why not create those forms of content and put it on those platforms so that they can push it as well, get some more engagement back to my podcast, right? I mean, the hope is, you know, that we would create these short form contents, shorts and videos and, and everything like that, put it on these platforms. The hope is to get subscribers and get people to listen to the podcast, the audio version or the video version, you know, whatever, you know, works for whoever is listening, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't make sense to fight against this, these, these huge you know, gigantic machines, they have so much control and so much reach and they're not going anywhere. So if you can't beat them, join them and learn how to maximize them to benefit you. And that's where I, you know, I just was like, let's just, just go video and get it done with, you know? Yeah. And honestly, it's, it's easy to do. It's not like your process really changes. You're still talking to the people you're still interviewing. The only thing you're really doing is you're spicing up your graphics a little bit better than yeah. you would for maybe a title image for your podcast, but now you're making it into a larger format for, for multiple platforms. And you can't do your podcast in your pajamas anymore, right? Because you got to at least have a shirt on, you know, if you're going to have a video <laughs> podcast and, you know, but uh, <laughs> there's a reason why the camera only goes waist up. Right? That's the. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I I always thought if if I didn't do two geeks talking, I probably would have done a no pants podcast podcast. <laughs> I love it. Maybe that's my next show. The no Pants <laughs> Yeah. The camera only goes from the shoulders up. Eh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a clean podcast. So really, I swear. Uh, <laughs> Wonderful. Well, let's dive into the short aspect because that's something I started doing a couple of years ago. I usually do it mainly for clients these days. I don't do it so much for myself only because the client is the focus. The guest is the focus of the show. That's how I perceive mm -hmm. it. I'm sure you're you're very similar in that respect as well. Yeah. Why are shorts so important, especially for from a promotional standpoint, especially in this fast-paced society of technology? Well, you said it right there. It's fast-paced, right? <laughs> Everybody nowadays wants, you know, that quick dopamine hit. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the problem with social media. That's actually what it actually created. People's attention spans cannot go past a minute, mm -hmm. really. Social media platforms you know, they said, okay, we know people's attention span is very limited right now. So, you know, if you want to promote your podcast, give me a short, give me something quick that gets to the point that can satisfy the need for someone else who is maybe just scrolling on their phone. Once you have that short, then you can put it up there on social media and someone can list, look at it in a minute and get something out of it. Then you can actually create like someone who can become a follower of your podcast or whatever, but it's this microwave society. They want a quick dopamine hit right away. You know, they don't want to take time to actually go deep and understand the topic. So it's a good thing. And it's a bad thing because society in general, their attention spans are so short, yeah. right? And it's because of social media. 
people just go and on their phone and they start scrolling and if first you know few seconds don't catch somebody they're gone to the next thing because they don't have that mental strength anymore to mm. kind of stick through something you know i honestly want to do a poll to try to see how much people actually read not the ability to read but how much people actually sit down and can actually read a book you know go through chapters of a book and how long it will take them to do that because our attention spans nowadays because of social media video and all these things that are trying to give us that quick dopamine hit really quick mm -hmm. is made our attention span so so short right and i mean yeah i'm part of the problem if i'm creating sh <laughs> i'm creating shorts and reels and stuff and but i, I mean i want to get people to listen to my content right so i'm creating shorts and reels as well um, now one of the things going back to what i mentioned before with regards to one of the biggest problems with podcasting is the time it takes. I realized that these shorts and reels, it takes a long time to create them as well, right? Yep. So I'm constantly looking and learning to try to find out new tools that I can use that kind of automate that process to make it quick, right? So I know that there's some AI tools out there, Cast Magic, uh, Opus Clips and yep. stuff like that, where you can just take your video, put it in there, it chops it up into like 20 different clips you know, for like 30 to one minute long. And there you go. You have all your stuff quickly, right? It's this society that we're in. They want everything quick. They want it now. And they only want it for 15 to 30 seconds to one minute or, yeah. or else they're gone, right? That's just the society that we're living in right now. But I, I would hope that people will actually try to, you know, have that attention span that can actually stick through to something for a long period of time, because that shows mental strength, right? The ability to focus on something and continue to progress, through that thing and logically think it out and instead of just being satisfied with that quick <laughs> dopamine hit in 15 seconds or 30 seconds and if it doesn't capture them in that, in that time frame then they're gone you know type of thing that's just me i'm praying and i'm hoping that society hasn't uh, gone down the tubes that that far yet uh, we'll maybe see. we are <laughs> maybe I, I think, we are right <laughs> i think we're well past that that level uh, as much as we we want society to do well we've jumped off that cliff and hopefully we have a parachute but who knows <laughs> From a societal standpoint, I mean, not from a, you know, a physical standpoint. Absolutely. You have guests on your show. You're doing this as a business. Technology has advanced as much as it has. We're dealing with shorts. We're dealing with all of this extra content here. When it comes to having a guest on the show itself, what is your process? Is it, a, a, do you research them? Do you just run and gun? Is this like free form, hit the record button and let's see where the conversation goes. What is your take on being a podcast host so this is a, a this was a learning process for me because my other podcast that i had it was a solo podcast just me i didn't didn't really take on guests and if i did t have any guests on my previous podcast the, the faith fight podcast it was someone that i knew quite well i didn't really need to do much research into who they were right but this podcast yes i am doing some pre-work before i bring someone on the podcast number one i want to connect right because mm -hmm. i love to connect with other podcasters well connect with people in general people who i have a, something in common with right so podcasting so one of the things that i do is i think the way that i met you kurt was i put a, a message in a group yeah. saying hey i am starting a new podcast does anyone want to you know come and share their story about their podcast and i put a link to a google doc i think it was or a google form where they had to enter in their details what's your podcast name give me the link what's it about you know how long you've been doing it etc 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 and what i did after that was i looked through that list and i listened to pretty much all of the podcasts for all of the people whoever you know went on that that list i don't want to say i um had to pick and choose because i wanted i made a podcast to help people I had to find people who had podcasts that were of good quality, mm -hmm. that were doing it for a while and actually can bring some value to the people who are listening, right? So I went through that list and I kind of selected, okay, this is a podcast. They've been doing it for, you know, four or five years. You know, I, I went on to uh, Listen Notes and I checked them up to see how well they ranked on Listen Notes, how much engagement they get. I went to the podcast players and the apps and I checked the reviews to see how many reviews that they had. Uh, and I listened to the podcast to hear how it sounds, right? So just to backtrack my background, I used to produce music for a long time. I can't even remember. I think maybe early 2010, I think. 
I think 2010 is when I started doing that. I used to produce music and that's how I got into podcasting actually. My ears are really, when it comes to audio, I like I have really good ears. I like good sound in audio. And if I hear a podcast and the audio is sounding so good, it's like my ears are like smiling when I hear <laughs> like podcasts that sound great. Like the audio is nice and crisp. You know, everything is just perfect. And if I hear a podcast like that, I absolutely want them on my podcast, right? If if they meet, they check off all the boxes and they're not talking about, you know, something that is morally wrong, right? I would absolutely want them on my podcast. So I do pre-work you know, to listen to their podcasts, to check their quality, to understand what they're talking about, uh, how long they've been in the podcasting game for, to make sure that they have some value and can give insight to the people who listen to I Made a Podcast, right? If I bring someone who just started the podcast and they don't know anything and their podcast sounds like trash, I don't mean to like, you know, make anyone feel bad or anything like that, but it, <laughs> people go through a learning progress. I mean, I'll say when I started the Faith Fight podcast, it wasn't that, it wasn't as good as it is right now, right? So you could probably say it did sound like trash. I sounded like trash, I think, mm. back when I started compared to now, right? But I learned as I continued to grow and it doesn't mean that those people won't be on the podcast. It's just, I won't have them on the podcast right now, right? I'll reach out to them at a later time when they learn and get better and they start to gain a little bit more traction and get, have a little bit more insight and can share and bring a little bit more value to the people who listen to I Made a Podcast, right? So I do all of that pre-work ahead of time and I listen to everybody's podcast. I usually go back to the very first episode and I listen to that one and I listen to the, something, some in the middle and some at the end and I kind of can gauge the growth right? From beginning to where they are. And that's what I do for every single person that I have on my podcast. And it actually helps the conversation as well, right? Because I have something to talk about when I have them on the podcast. <laughs> that's a good thing though. I mean, a lot of times if you have an interview show like this, if you're not doing the bare minimum of any type of research, then you're not really doing your job as a host. Going back to your fact of having guests on the show and, and looking at their previous work, we've all gone through that. We've all started somewhere. We've all gotten better, hopefully, with their stuff. It's the same for the entertainment scene. You have a guest on the show that they want to be on the show to promote themselves, or maybe they're just starting out. Sometimes you have to say, I'm sorry, just not at this stage. It's exactly. It's a shame. It truly is. And, and I always hate turning down people like that as well. I know you're going to do well. I see something in your work, this is not really the right stage for you in your career. Yeah. And actually what I do is I say, Hey, this may not be the time right now, but listen to, I made a podcast so you can learn some stuff, get better. Right. And then, you know, maybe season two, I'll have you on. Right. <laughs> As hosts. So we have to set some type of boundaries because if we get someone on the show and we're pulling teeth to get answers, it's not fun for yourself as a host. It's not fun for the people that's going to listen to this. And it's probably not fun for the person that's nervous on the other side of the stage. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. You've had a lot of guests on your show here. Do you have a top five list at the moment for season one or two or whatever for your show? Oh, you're putting, you're putting me on the spot, eh, Kurt? Oh man. <laughs> if I wasn't a host, I wouldn't ask these tough questions, right? <laughs> well, you know what I will say? All of the people, because of the research that I've done into everyone that I've had on, every single guest has had a really good moments or, or teachable things that have happened in every single episode. So everybody that I've had on the podcast, I have taken a little bit from everyone. One of the very first people that I spoke to, his name was Alan Wooford. And he has a podcast called The Diary of a Bald Man. And yes, he is bald, right? So we yeah. we were connecting on levels that were, <laughs> were like deeper than just podcasting, right? <laughs> But one of the things that I took away from him, I would encourage you to go listen to his podcast, yeah. but the tone of his voice, man, just sounded so, uh, so regal and so powerful, you know, on his podcast. It's just amazing. And then, you know, I spoke to someone else. Her name was Tabitha Thorell, and she dropped so much insight. Now, she has a podcast called What Went Wrong? Right. And it's uh, how to turn your trials into triumphs in terms of business and success and everything like that. And she been in the podcasting game for a while. She gave some wonderful insight. She was on my podcast and she was basically begging people to be excited. You know, don't be boring on your podcast, right? Because it takes just as much effort and time from you to do a boring podcast as it does to do an exciting one. So just get excited about your podcast, get excited about what you're doing. Cause can you imagine if we're here talking to them and we're just talking like this? <laughs> yeah. So this is my podcast. You have a podcast called, I made a podcast and you know, it is what it is. And yeah. But no, I want to be, I'm excited about my podcast. I love my podcast. Right. So I'm, it take, get the energy up and, you know, be excited about what you're talking about because it helps to keep people engaged. And Kurt, I don't want to forget about uh, the episode that we did because remember when we were recording oh. and, 
<laughs> my computer shut off. <laughs> my computer shut right off in the middle of the recording, and yeah. I lost it. I lost the recording. <laughs> But thank God you were recording on your side. Mm. And that was um, like one of the best moments that I've had on my podcast. Again, a teachable moment to teach us about like having backups and making sure that you do your updates on your computer because <laughs> it was so funny. Like we're just here talking and I, I think I asked you a question about your tools that you use. And then all of a sudden I heard recording has stopped and my computer <laughs> shut off and uh, the screen went black. And then mm. I was just like, oh my gosh, what happened? Right. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> but oh. thank God you were recording on your side. Yeah. And I kept all of that in the episode. Uh, if you remember, I kept all oh, that yeah. in the episode because it was a teachable <laughs> moment for everybody to make sure that you have your backups and, you know, make sure that your updates are up, your mm -hmm. computer is up to date because yeah, stuff like that can happen. And if you don't have backups, you would lose everything yeah. that you all the time. And you gave, you dropped so much insight and gems in that episode, man, I could go on. I could go through every single episode and pick out so many <laughs> good things that people have said that were so beneficial to podcasters. I mean, Global Treasures podcast, the two hosts on that podcast, they were talking about how you should um, continue to persevere, right? And you don't want to end up in, I think he called it the graveyard of three podcast episodes where you start a podcast and after three episodes, you burn out because you run out of content or you lose steam, lose traction. And then, you you know, your podcast, you have three episodes is out there in the world, but nothing else. You got to actually persevere uh, and get past that point of burnout, you know, and be prepared to ha learn how to create enough content to sustain you longer than three, longer than 10 episodes, you know, have a plan to continue to go for the long haul if this is something that you want to do. Yeah. Right. So much good insight. I could go on and on and on. <laughs> Every single episode, there was something that somebody said that I said, that is really good. Yeah. I'm going to take that. And I think that's what separates a lot of podcasts is, do you have some education in your entertainment? Yeah. And I call it edutainment. That's yeah. just my word that I use. But I think it's just something that's necessary, especially when it comes to the short content that we put out. Is there education in what you're putting out? Is there a word of wisdom or a nugget of truth or something that a guest has said that may spark someone else in their life in some way, shape or form? It may not be immediate as soon as the episode releases, but maybe down the road, if someone goes through your archive, maybe something someone has said has Absolutely. put them on their path to whatever they want to do. Yeah. And that's, that's basically how I live my life, right? Yeah. As a Christian, I want to make sure that I live a life of impact, right? You could look at it from the like from a biblical sense. I want to help people to grow in their relationship with God and know Jesus, but also just in terms of making impact. I want to help everybody else around me be better by using what I have inside of me to be a blessing or to help them, right? And that's why I started this podcast because I wanted to connect with other podcasters. I wanted to help them in terms of getting better at podcasting. And this is something that's passionate to me. So I want to make sure that with what I do, that I live a life of impact and I'm helping somebody out there, anybody out there. I don't know. I don't know all the people who are listening and, you know, I've gotten a lot of people, a lot of downloads and stuff like that. A lot of people are listening, but I want to make sure that after you come in contact with me, your life has been impacted for the better. That's basically how I live my life, not just with podcasting, but in general. Everyone usually asks, what's the wisest piece of advice or what's the most BS piece of advice you've ever received? But what is the second wisest piece of advice you've received that has stuck with you in your career? Oh, Lord. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, boy. I do not know. What I will say is this. The second wisest advice that I have received is we are all made creative and we can either use our creativity to make excuses or to make something happen. Make it happen. Ooh, that's good. I yeah. like that. That's that's my second wisest piece of advice. That's really good. Well, it looks like I found the short content I could create for this episode now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I think if you cut out the ahs and the ums and me oh, thinking, yeah. it was only 15 seconds. So you don't have to worry about people trying to, you know, getting their attention span because in 15 seconds, I hit it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that or I'll get like only 25% of the actual yeah. <laughs> thing will be viewed and they'll just swipe away. It's like, oh, come on, let him at least finish his sentence before you go. Like, geez, that's rude. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow, wonderful, wonderful. That's the one thing that you, we all fall into sometimes is the analytics. We look at the numbers because we're looking for that dopamine hit. Are we doing well with our episodes? Are we doing well with our shows? But besides the analytics and besides all of that technology, how can you use that information to make yourself a better host and have a better show? Because of the people that I talk to, I've talked to a lot of people who do solo podcasts and a lot of people who do interview-based podcasts. And, and it's kind of selfishly <laughs> when I think about it, right? Because I want to learn as much as I can about podcasts. And I have learned a lot from other people who do interview-based podcasts and I see how they do it. So through the research portion of what I do before I interview someone, I learn, you know, a lot of things about podcasts. And like one of the questions that I ask on my podcast is if there's anything that I may have forgotten to ask you that you want to talk about. And this is how I end every episode because I mean, I might forget something that the person that I'm speaking to may think is really important. So I've learned through other people that I've spoken to how to become a better interviewer uh, through podcasting. But that's one of the things that I do and, and how I've learned a little bit more about podcasting and, and, and being a host in general. I do a similar question uh, before I jump into my introspective as well, just because sometimes if you get talking, it's just like, hey, we've, we've been going on for a half hour, 40 minutes or so. And so it's just like, am I hitting all the points? Am I, am I asking right. all the questions you want to talk about and questions that I want to ask as well? It's not, it's a give and take mm -hmm. relationship. It's not just about having a guest on the show. You want to have a good conversation. That's the main exactly. thing. When it comes to language, language always has power. But what was an early experience where you learned that, that phrase? I want to say, going back to my belief system, being a Christian, um, I read my Bible and I understand the power of words, right? Um, we know like in Genesis, it says that God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and he did it by saying, let there be light, let there be this. And he spoke to create, right? So as a Christian, I understand that my words have power. So I know that I'm very careful with what I say and what words I release into the atmosphere. So when it comes to language and, and again, my podcast, you know, the internet, taking it all the way across the world, I want to make sure that the things that I say on my podcast, that they are, that they are factually correct, mm -hmm. that they are morally, you know, in line with my belief system. Um, and also, I mean, and we have seen, you know, the impact of when people especially with social media, you know, they would post something or say something or, or they press send too quickly or post too quickly and it it's taken out of context, right? So we got to be very careful with the words that we speak, the words that we release. And I think that for me, that comes out of my Christian background and my understanding of scriptures and the fact that we have power. The Bible says that life and death is in the power of your tongue. So choose life that you may live. And that's really important to me. So I make sure that everything that I, I try my best to say things that speak life, encouragement, and that can help someone and uplift someone, right? That's just who I am. That's why I believe that language and how you speak is very, very important. You know, we can talk about technology all we want, though, but starting a show, obviously, we're not always going to have the best gear. We're always going to have what we have to deal with on hand. The fact that we have our cell phones are quite easily the best way right now to even shoot video, to do your podcast, to do your blogs and all of that other stuff here. But when you got started, what was your base bare bones setup before you upgraded? Yeah, great question. So remember earlier I said I was in music production. I used to produce music, so I had just about everything. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll tell you the setup that I had when I started, when I started music, pr producing music. So I had an HP laptop, I'm still using it right now, and it still works. I love it. I had it. So this was in 2010 is when I bought it. And I had a Audio Technica AT2020 microphone. Uh, and again, I used it for music production and to, to uh, do vocals. I had a program called Pro Tools. Now this is music production software. And I also had a program called uh, Persona Studio One. Now I still use that program right now to produce, and that's music production software. So it's complete overkill for a podcast, but I had it. So I, I've been using it all this while. Pretty much that is my setup. I have a Tube MP Phantom Power box here going into my M-Audio interface that goes into my laptop. So when I started, yeah, when I started, I had the AT2020, but I upgraded my microphone 
towards the end of last year is when I upgraded my microphone because I'm, I made this transition to video. Everything that I mentioned just a moment ago before, with the exception of my new microphone is what I started with. Okay. What I have now, the only things that I've upgraded was I have upgraded my laptop mm -hmm. uh, because I needed a new one to do um, some sort of video editing requirements on my older laptop. It, it wouldn't, it, it couldn't handle it. sounded like a tractor when I tried to run, <laughs> <laughs> when tried to run some of these other programs. So, yeah. but I still do it for audio production and for recording. Okay. Uh, but for editing, I use my new laptop and I have a Logitech, I think it's got C920 yeah. uh, webcam and this new microphone, which is a Rode pod mic. Okay. Uh, and that's basically the upgrade. And uh, for storage, I have just a external, um, mm. I don't even know what it's called. It's, it's a two terabyte storage drive I have plugged in here uh, because I know that when you're doing video, uh, you want, it takes up a lot of, a yeah. lot of uh, space, right? Uh, so I have a two terabyte storage here as well as some online storage, like through yeah. drive, Dropbox. Google drive and stuff like that. Drop, Yeah. Because you always want to keep backups just in case, yeah. you know, something happens and you know, your, all your episodes disappear. I think you had a story like that from way oh, yeah. back in the days as well. Right. Oh, yeah. So that's pretty much my setup. Pretty simple. Now, online tools is a different different story. I do have uh, quite a few online tools. Do you okay. want me to go in that yeah, as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, I'm curious about that. Okay, so I mentioned um, the software that I use to edit. So that's Persona Studio One, and I don't use Pro Tools anymore. But what I'm using right now, and again, because I'm getting into video, I'm kind of toggling between two softwares. The script is one and CapCut is another to okay. do the video editing. And because I'm new to this video part of podcast, I'm kind of just playing with it to see which one is easier to use and to see which one can help me to get the best results faster. Right? So I'm toggling between the two right now. So those are pretty much the, what I'm using right now for editing my video. So for me, I use CapCut for shorts. CapCuts for shorts is easy simple to do. I like the fact that it has the subtitle feature. Yes. You have so many varieties. It's a great tool and I'll, I'll never pay for it because I like the free version that they have and you can customize your, your subtitles to your color scheme, which exactly. is awesome. I think that's, yeah. I use DaVinci Resolve specifically for my video and for my video editing. I'll use either Audacity or, or Isotopes. Uh, yep. RX for the cleaning up my audio if I need to. DaVinci Resolve has the capability of doing all of that because it links in with all of your plugins as it is. So wherever your plugins are stored, you can just link to that in DaVinci Resolve and you could use everything in one program. Great tool, great software. A friend of mine got me onto DaVinci Resolve like five, six years ago because Adobe Premiere crapped out on me and it just, I was like, all right, well, I guess I have to switch now. So yeah, yeah. it took me a little bit to learn. This is something that um, I think is important to note as well. So especially with regards to podcasting, if you can get good quality audio from the source, yeah. that can reduce the time that it takes to edit afterwards, right? And the, one of the biggest challenges, you know, with podcasts, as I mentioned before, is the editing process, yeah. right? If you can record nice, wonderful, clean sound and audio, and there's no mistakes in your, your, you know, as you're going through your episode and the person that you're speaking with doesn't have a lot of ahs and ums and whatever in their uh, filler words in there when they're speaking, then, you know, your editing process after the fact, will, the time frame will be shorter. And that's one of the things, that, again, that I've learned as a podcaster and, a, and as a podcast producer, I tell all my clients, as clean as you can get the audio when you're recording it, it actually makes it easier for me. And I can have quicker turnarounds, right? So that's a good, that's some good insight for podcasters out there. Uh, but one software that I want to mention that actually is a game changer is this tool, this online tool called Alphonic. Now this tool is uh, they give you two hours free processing every month um, so you can actually use it. But if there is any background noise, um, static in the audio, humming or buzzing in the audio that you want to clean up, noise reduction, anything, you just take your audio, you put it in this app and it will clean all of that up for you. And it has been a game changer for me. I remember there was a time that I recorded an episode and I couldn't trace back where this buzzing was coming from. I didn't hear it as loud when I was recording it. I said, okay, maybe people won't notice it. When I was listening back to it and doing some editing, I was like, man, this is louder than I thought. And me with my ears, yeah. right, I, it's, I was just like, man, this is really irritating me. And instead of re-recording that episode, I put it through the system, this program called Alphonic, and it actually cleaned it up completely, squeaky clean. 
it was completely gone. It was a game changer. Now I know a lot of these other apps like CapCut has something that you can do noise reduction. Uh, Descript has studio sound. With CapCut, you could use it on the free version, right? Uh, Descript, I think you have to pay for studio sound. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this program, uh, I really love it. And one of the things that I stand by, I want everyone to have great sounding audio on their podcast. And I want them to do it with the least amount of money as possible. Right. Yeah. So all of these free tools that I find, I put on like a cheat sheet um, and I give it away. I have a link on my podcast that people can download it and they get access to this entire list of resources that I found that are free, like or have a free portion to them that you can actually use and get the results on your podcast without having to spend a dime. I use a lot of these resources quite often. This tool, Alphonic, I use it quite often for my clients because some of them don't have the best setup, right? So I use it a lot for them. For myself, I'm pretty much okay because I, I have a good setup, good microphone and everything here. But my clients, for sure, I use it for them every single time. That, that's awesome. If it's a free link or whatever, you want to send for the show notes I, i'd be happy to test yeah absolutely well too and podcasting itself is so accessible to to everyone the fact that you can go on a show and talk about your passion about just bridges the gap no matter where you are in the world or no matter what's going on in your current life and all about having fun with it and if you don't have fun then why are you doing a podcast <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah i enjoy podcasts and i have fun doing this is there anything I haven't touched on you'd like to share and showcase with those that are watching and listening to this show so far? Um, yeah, I want to encourage everyone that uh, if you want to start a podcast, you should absolutely start a podcast if you have a business or any type of service, service or a product, anything. You should start a podcast, even if it is for a season, if you can create some evergreen content that will live on and not need to be refreshed or updated for a long period of time, you should absolutely start a podcast because you can actually use that as part of your marketing program to talk about your service or your product. Put it out there, you talk about it, you talk about the benefits or how your service or your product can help other people. And you can go through maybe a six month period of where you produce a podcast every single week for those six months. And then for the next few years, you just continue to promote those episodes and share with other people. And you can use this as a tool to generate leads for your business, generate clients. I didn't have this thought when I started, I made a podcast, but it actually grew into that because I wanted to become a podcast producer myself. But then once I started, I made a podcast, I realized, wait a minute, <laughs> I am talking when I'm interviewing people, I am speaking to my potential future clients. And then I realized again, I was like, wait a minute, the people who listen to this podcast can be future clients for me as well. So it's like uh, this podcast is, it's almost like uh, a tool that can be used for me to generate business for my podcast production and editing services. And that's exactly how I use it. So I want to say if anyone out there who has a service or a business, you can take this same template, the way that I'm using it for my business and my podcast production and editing services, you can use it as well. You know, unplug podcasting, talk about your business, talk about your service and put it out there. And then when people listen to it, you know, as long as you're targeting the right people, you will be able to get those people coming back eventually as clients, right? If they listen to enough of your stuff, if they begin to know, like, and trust you, they will have a relationship with you through your podcast and they will be more inclined to reach out to you and do business with you. And you can use your podcast to generate revenue for yourself. So that's just one insight that I wanted to share. Uh, that's something that I learned and that I'm doing now through, I made a podcast. Yeah, I definitely have to use your templates a little more so <laughs> uh, than I have been. So I think you have a great show. I think you have a great production value. And I think that you're, you're making a podcast a business like it podcast should be a business. So we just have to take the time and actually do it. That's the, exactly. the ultimate goal. Yep. Everyone usually has one person that inspires them on their path to where they are today. Who is that for you? Oh, well, on my, that's deep, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh man. There's uh, quite a few people. First of all, my dad, my dad passed away in 2011, but there's a lot of things like it's so amazing. There are so much things that he was able to deposit into us, uh, his kids. I still do to this very day. And I find myself doing with my son. It's just so amazing. 
uh, like my dad was uh, an amazing husband, amazing father. Any instrument that he saw, he could pick up and play. And you guys probably see my my guitar right here. Uh, behind me, I have a keyboard as well. And that's how I got into music production. And I also sing as well. Uh, but my dad, just about so everything that he does or did, I have found myself doing. Because he passed away, I find it as very encouraging to know that his memory still lives on through me when I can still do the things that he used to do now for my family, right? So I would say my dad would be the person that I look to. He was a great father. Um, and then even to take it more to a more spiritual sense, right? As a Christian, it would be Jesus. I look to the example that he has given us in scripture so that I can be a blessing to everybody around me and help them find the peace that I know in my life, right? Through understanding, learning, and growing through what I read in the Bible and then applying it uh, when I live out my daily life in order to be a blessing to everybody around me. So those I, you asked for one, I gave you two. Uh, I'm sorry, but I usually give more than I'm asked all the time. So Sorry. Those are those are the two people that I would say, my dad and Jesus. I, I can't add to that, so I'm not <laughs> going to. <laughs> From a professional standpoint, you're, of course, a successful podcast host and business person for podcasting and podcast production. I don't know how many more podcasts I can fit into that sentence, but we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so from a professional standpoint, you are successful on many fronts of the podcast scene. Do you consider yourself personally successful? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, one of the things that hit me actually um, a couple of years ago when I was celebrating my birthday every year, you know, or every now and then people would look back and kind of mark what they're doing or what they've accomplished in the previous years. And what, usually when birthdays happen, that's when we tend to look back at the year and see what we've done. I realized in my 20s, there were things that I wanted to accomplish, right? So I set some goals for myself in my 20s. But then in my 30s, I realized that one by one, I started to achieve every single one of those goals. Uh, and then when I turned 40 and I was, this is on my, my 40th birthday, I looked back and I was thinking back what I've done or what I've accomplished. And that was when I realized that everything that I actually wanted in my 20s to accomplish, I actually accomplished every, all of it in my 30s, right? So that's why I can consider myself as a success. Everything that I want to do up to this point, I have done. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't have any more goals. I still have things that I wanted to do in my 30s that I am now accomplishing in my 40s. But for where I am right now, I can consider myself a success because I've accomplished so much other things. And I'm actually pursuing the things that I'm actually passionate about and want to uh, achieve. And I'm happy about it. And I think the quote goes that people are happy when they have goals and they feel like the things that they are doing are in the direction of achieving those goals. And I'm happy about the success of the path that I'm taking towards that step of success. So I would, yes, consider myself a success, at least for this very moment of what I've been able to accomplish so far in my life. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? Yeah, just got to learn from it. Got to learn from it. Um, I usually, I'm very, I usually spend a lot of time reflecting. I try to do it every single day. Uh, but I usually sit back at the end of the day with a cup of tea and just do some reflection on how that day went. And if there was something that I, where I didn't hit the mark, I would think about or ask myself that tough question of why I didn't hit the mark or why I was not successful at something. And that's where I would actually apply or see what I can do differently so that I can learn and be better next time, right? Not get down on myself and, and kick myself, but see what I can learn or what was the critical mistake or thing that I did that caused me not to meet the goal or the objective the first time. You think we're too hard on ourselves in our life? I sometimes can be too hard on myself. Um, so every now and then I have to remember that I need to give myself some grace, uh, especially, especially when it comes to podcasting. Like I would hear like a little, you know, I remember when I was editing music, um, I would hear something in the audio and I would have maybe like 20 or 30 audio tracks. Yeah. And I would go through each one on, on solo to find out where that sound was coming from in order to get it out. But that's me being hard on myself. And I kind of do that to myself sometimes. So I have to remember to give myself some grace um, and understand that 
life is all about learning and we're not going to be perfect at everything the first time when we do it. So as long as we continue to learn and get better, you know, it's okay if you make a mistake, learn, get better, deal with the failure, learn how to get better and then move forward. The younger generation is looking at your work and they're becoming inspired to be creative in their own way, maybe making a podcast of their own. And the fact that you have the younger generation with you, with your own child is even more special. Maybe you're going to inspire them down whatever path that they choose creatively as well. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? Oh, that's a deep question. (laughs) You're really, you're really hitting me with these questions, Kurt. Oh man. You know what? I, I, I have no clue how to answer that question. And this is the reason why (laughs) not to avoid it, but the reason why I have no clue how to answer that question is because look how much things have had advanced. Let's just go in the last 15 years with regards to technology. I have no clue what technology is going to be like in the next 15 years. We didn't talk too much about AI and and how that's uh, kind of replacing the role of humans in terms of in podcasts and in editing and stuff like that. But if you think about the, what AI is doing for podcasting, uh, for media in general, you can create something and, you know, people don't even need to be involved in it, right? A, com- a computer can create it. So the one thing that I would say to encourage the younger generation is to continually be educated about the change in trends with regards to technology uh, and make sure that you're ahead of the curve, right? So you are a forerunner or in the front of the curve so that you can be thought of as a leader. Because if you're not one of the leaders, you're going to be lagging behind. And if you're lagging behind, chances are that technology could potentially replace you. Definitely have to have you back on to talk about AI and podcasting and, and video as well. I mean, just Eventually, it's going to get to the part where we'll no longer have to be worried about being hosts. We'll just have our virtual AI avatars be our actual hosts. And we just don't have to worry about it anymore. Then I can actually do stuff with my life. You know, I <laughs> I actually tried testing that one time. Oh. So I had the idea to see if I could create a podcast episode. And I'll probably play with this a little bit more to see if I could create a podcast episode without actually speaking anything. So I actually tested that using, um, I think it was Descript. Mm. So I typed something up and I wanted to hear what it sounded like. If it sounded like my voice, if it Mm. sounded like me and it didn't quite, but it's scary where these things are headed, right? Because, you know, they get you to read a sample audio and it takes voice samples and it uses that to create where you can type in text and it can have it say your audio. So I want to play with that a little bit more, but you're right. It's going to come to a point where, you don't even need to speak anything anymore. <laughs> you know, you just need to type something up and it could say it for you. I saw something with Gary Vee recently and he was talking about, the, he goes, the way of influencers, good luck in 10 years. It's exactly. Gonna, it's going to be virtual influencers. Uh, you know, you think the influencers are whining and complaining now? Just give it five to 10 years. And exactly. We won't have to worry about influencers. Anymore. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we could chat for another couple of hours, but I hate to say it, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. Thanks so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Kurt, you are an all-star. I really appreciate you and all the things. No, no, no. You are an all-star. You are a veteran. If I walked into the stadium or the Hall of Fame for podcasters, <laughs> I want to see your name in the rafters with a banner with your face and your, your logo right oh, there. You were doing a great job with your podcast and your impact in lives that you don't even know. So continue to do what you're doing. I was blessed to be on your podcast. Thank you so much for having me. This was great. I enjoyed our conversation. Well, I can't have you leave without at least telling us where we can find you, how we can support you. You've already, you've already buttered me up enough, so I'm just going <laughs> to flip the camera over to you and you can just tell us where we can find you and support you there. Yeah, wonderful. Sure. Uh, so my podcasts are called um, The Faith Fight Podcast and I Made a Podcast. Those are the names on social media. So on Instagram, you can just search those names. Uh, On Facebook, you can search those names. And also my podcast production is called uh, Podcast Production Lab. So you can find that on Instagram as well, where I will put reels of the clients that I'm working with as well. And I help share and promote their podcast and what they're working on. Online, you can search for me, imadeapodcast.com and thefaithfightpodcast.com. Kurt, I'll make it really easy and I'll send you all of the links and you can put it in the notes and people can just go there and click on it. 
So if you can't remember all the things that I just mentioned, just go in the description, I guess, and, yeah. and Kurt will hook you up with the links and you can just click there and follow me there. So <laughs> like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talk. You can, of course, find this interview and 1,200 plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's T-W-O. Website's going through a complete rebuild because I'm only one person. Give me a break. So go to our YouTube channel, <laughs> youtube.com forward slash TGT Media. The podcast you can find at twogeekstalking.podbean.com or just search Two Geeks Talking wherever you get your podcasts. iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all those wonderful platforms. And of course, as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.